Right, we're gonna make a video here. This is a uh, 2005 Jeep Liberty 3.7 liter motor. And this Jeep was contacted by a fellow who wanted to know if I would rebuild it for him. I told him I'd give it consideration. And uh, so we decided I'd give it a try. When I asked him what happened to the motor, he said it ran out of oil. That doesn't bode well. Um, so maybe this is a chance for us to look at what happens inside of a motor when you when you drain the oil out of it and run it. Um, let me show you the motor itself, the engine. It's sitting here. I apologize for the noise. Every time I move this thing, I get a lot of noise. So there's the engine. If you can see it, I hope. Um, it will not turn over. Um, I put a breaker bar on the on the harmonic balancer nut bolt, and uh, that'll turn five or so degrees either way. But that's it. And uh, so it's functionally locked up. I pulled it out of the car, and now we're going to start tearing it apart and see what it looks like inside. You'll notice <coughs> the harmonic balancer is broken. Pulley's broken on the harmonic balancer. Uh, I guess when it seized up, maybe it saw tremendous uh, sudden force. Uh, the timing system looks to be intact. Uh, the timing chains are taut on both sides, so the timing system hadn't uh, shattered itself. Now, I did pull. And I'll pull one for you in just a minute, but I did pull individually one at a time, put them back on. The uh, cam journals, let me see, the cam journals on this thing are a little different. They're, uh, they're aluminum with out any bearing. So basically the bearing becomes the aluminum. So you got to make sure that they're reasonable. Uh, these are reasonable. They have scratches, they all do. This thing's got 150, 160,000 miles on it. So they're all going to have some scratches, but there's only one spot out of what eight journals four to a side where I could almost hang a nail in the uh, in the groove on the camshaft so I think we're okay there I think right off from looking at the top end only the heads are rebuildable so far let me show you something that uh, I've been asked about several times and that is this uh, support bracket uh, had a number of people ask me about uh, this bracket on top of the motor that I used when I pull these 3.7s out. Um, it's basically just homemade out of uh, one by two channel welded together. There's four bolts on each side, drilled holes for those bolts. And so it just bolts on to where the intake, well, the, where the plenum comes off. And so it's pretty straightforward. I just uh, wrap a uh, strap around it like you can see there. Uh, you could weld hooks and chains and whatever else you want on there, but mine's just real simple and real trivial and not real pretty, but real functional. So we got this thing on the stand now and uh, we're ready to start digging into it and uh, see what we come up with on this motor. I think it's going to be interesting, if nothing else, to see what a motor looks like on the internals after you run out of oil. So let's get started. All right, well, we got the, uh, what do we take off? The harmonic balancer, the harmonic balancer bolt. We took off the uh, knock sensor system. And now we're taking off the, uh, we've just taken off the water pump and the timing cover. Just wanted to let you know, looks okay from here so far, as far as uh, timing system goes. There didn't seem to be any real negative effects to the timing system. And we were gonna replace it anyway but just kind of part of the post-mortem timing system looks okay let's see where we go now all right so we got the timing system stripped out um let also took out the camshaft position sensor also took off the oil pump the uh, oil pump suction lines did two cell down in there take it off later uh one thing that's noteworthy i guess is the balance shaft is loose Balance shaft gears loose, and so we'll have to see what that means. Balance shaft turns okay when the gear's not slipping, so I'm not sure. I have any reason to believe the cam shaft, the balance shaft, uh, is trashed. But uh, I don't know. I'm not sure how this gear goes on there. Uh, if I remember correctly from the last one, the gear is actually part of the uh, part of the shaft, which could mean it's trashed. But We'll find out. Uh, say, hang with me a minute. We'll find out together. See how easily this wants to come off of here. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a 
container plate. So that thing looks, looks good on its bearing surfaces, which is nice because those bearings aren't fun to replace. You don't need to. This thing I'm not as sure about. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, I think there might be a small, small issue here. But again, this doesn't make it not rebuildable. It just means you need to do something about the ballast shaft. We did that in the last motor. It was still manageable. Yeah, it looks like it's kind of hooked up there. So. All right, well, we'll dig into it more. Anyway, so far so good. Let's start taking off these heads. For the removal of the heads, all the head bolts are out. The exhaust manifolds are off. And uh, so we're going to see what we can do about popping these heads loose. Let's see how easy they want to come off. That's not too bad. What do we see? All valves are in place. You don't see any displaced, displaced valve seats. That's a good thing. seats are in place all the valves are in place so okay at this point the heads are probably rebuildable uh, carbon build up on top of the pistons normal stuff uh, here let me see I need to move some of this garbage out of the way don't I my car gets my tools. Get some of this out of the way. We're gonna have to turn this thing over anyway. Those are just head bolts, not worried about them. All the other bolts, useful bolts right now are Tag and tag. So, set these aside. Never, never, ever, never, ever, ever, ever reuse head bolts on one of these 3.7, 4.7. Deep Dodge Chrysler Mitsubishi motors. Um, never a good idea. So, let me turn this around for you. Stuff everywhere. It's kind of hard to get the same part when the sun comes down. Not sure yet whether I'm winning or losing, but. Alright. And you gotta be able to see better. I went in your way. Basically, it looks like any motor with that much miles on it. Carbon buildup on the pistons. Junk that fell in when I lifted the head off, because there's junk up here. Uh, and right off what you see doesn't look a chore but then again it's usually what you don't see that's the problem so oh, let's uh drop the old pan flip this baby over and see what's underneath and when we finished i mean done for uh she threw a rod not surprising considering the uh the cause of the injury but uh, right here it's uh it's not only destroyed the crankshaft way past any reasonable ability to turn it, it also destroyed the separator plate, it's pushed into this other piston. 
um, Payton got down to the piston yet, but it's it's down in there with a bunch of pieces and shards and the like. Honestly, I think if I remove this uh, this little wonder, probably get the uh, probably get right turn over, and rotate it. Uh, doesn't buy me much though. So. Anyway, uh, the answer is the answer is it's done. Um, there's damage to the block. The oil galley, oil return galley is tore up right there. There's damage in the in the block. The piston rod's obviously trashed. But you know me, a piston rod wouldn't stop me. Uh, we could replace that. But I'm afraid the crank one, that pretty much finishes it for this motor. Um, I'm going to do some checking, but I don't think cranks are very available for this motor at any reasonable price. But uh, yeah, I will look. Cause that's who I am. Took all the bed plate bolts off. Took the the uh, windage tray off. Yeah, and she's she's pretty much toast. And you can even see here on the windage tray when it came apart, what it did to the windage tray. Now the other one, the other 3.7, a little bit of this, not this severe, and certainly not something that damaged uh, the crank. Fairly, the rod broke at the rod end initially. I'm guessing. Um, I haven't even found it yet. I found a number of pieces, but none of them that look like a rod in yet. But if it's got to be in here, it can't rightly get out. Anyway, if I uh, I take it down further and need to show you, I will. But at this point, I think it's done for. Thanks for watching. Well, I'm going to go ahead and make one more segment uh, just to show you a few things. But here's the fisting question. Uh, yeah, the end of it's gone. Um, here's the pieces, at least, of the rod end uh, that were destroyed. Uh, I set the crank over there, but hopefully you saw it in the last segment. The crank journals destroyed. Two of them are, at least, and way beyond being able to turn them, turn them down. Uh, the piston that was on this side, on the opposing side from from where that one that threw the rod was, is here. The journal's trashed on this one uh, from, I guess, flying debris and the like. So that one's done as well. So, and the ballast shaft here is broken. So basically we're talking about a ballast shaft, two pistons, a crank, and I haven't evaluated the bed plate yet, but based on the destruction to the uh, oil return galley, probably a new bed plate as well. I'll be the first one to save a motor if it's savable, but this one, I'm going to have to recommend not get rebuilt. Crying shame I'll be it. But, uh, yeah. She's done for. Do me a favor. Run oil in your motors. Your engines. Keep them clean. Run oil. Lots of oil. Later.